Welcome to CVE Deep Dive, the new series in which we dive deep into CVEs. And we have a special one for our first episode, because today we are going to look at a vulnerability where we escalate a stored XSS to an RCE in IP board. Let's get straight into it. These CVEs were found in IP board, but what is it? Well, in essence, IP board is a platform, a forums platform, and they are targeting companies and a way for companies to interact with their community through these forum posts. And some big clients are, for example, Lego and Corsair. Just like all forum software, IP board has a file upload functionality to, for example, share images and files with other users on the forum. If you upload a file, then it gets saved on the web server and it gets named your original name dot a randomly generated MD5 hash and then the extension. In the case of images, it is safe to just give the path of this file to the user so that the user can embed it uh, on the forms and such because images are secure. However, for files that have no extension, for example, it would not be secure to send that file name with that MD5 hash that is generated that we don't know to the user. Because if, the, if this user has a link to a file without an extension and it sh he shares it to other people, then the web server will automatically see it as text slash HTML and thus try to render this file. So I could upload a file with a script tag uh, that has an alert in it and then send the link to that file to other people and it would get an XSS. However, luckily we have this MD5 hash in the file name that we don't know. So we're not able to exploit this. This is secure. Or do we know this MD5 hash? In order to see if this hash could be reversed, we need to look at the source code. And in the source code, we can see that this, this MD5 is created, is the hashed version of the result of MT underscore rand which is a PHP function that generates random values. So a random value is generated, it's MD5 hashed, and it's added to this file name. And we need to know this file name because then we get an XSS. Can we do that? Well, this empty underscore random function is not cryptographically correct. So, well, that should already give us a big hint that, well, hey, this might be possible. On top of that, this function only returns a return value between 1 and 2 billion, which leaves some brute force attacks actually feasible. So, how does this work? Well, in every PHP process, this empty random function will start and it will generate a random seed. However, like I said earlier, this is not a cryptographically secure algorithm to generate uh, random numbers. Uh, and in fact, there has been a lot of research done into this exact function and people have found out a way to crack the seat given some values. So with all of that information about random number generators and stuff in mind, let's build a concrete uh, attack plan that we can use. So step one, we are going to upload a malicious file and an image to the server. These will both get a file name of the malicious file, we won't get that file name back. So that will be secret and we need to know that to get our XSS. However, for the image, since images are saved by default, we will get uh, that this file name back, including this MD5 hash. Of this file name of the image, we are gonna take the MD5 hash and we are gonna crack it locally. Obviously a hash, you can crack it. And in this case, we know that the number will be between one and two billion. So that's very feasibly hack, uh, cracked by Hashcat or John and whatnot. So once we have that value, now we can try to use it and to reverse the seed out of this empty rent function um, using the research that has already been done into that. And then after about five minutes, we should get the seed. Now from the seed, we can obviously generate all the other values that are being generated by this random number generator. And uh, using that way, we can reliably predict the file name of our malicious file. And well, once we have that, we can obviously just 
have this link that is a reflected XSS. If people visit the link, they will our XSS will be executed on their machine, um, which is obviously really, really cool. This vulnerability is really cool, but how can we increase the impact of it? Because right now we point the victim to a specific page. However, what if we could use a page that the victim visits often and have the XSS executed on that page? And well, for that, we need to look into the, a new functionality in IP board, and this is a chatting system. You can send messages to somebody, and if you send a message to somebody, you expect them to obviously look at the message. And now, in this messaging system, there is a way to embed images, but there's also a way to embed other pages uh, on the forums, and that is done through an iframe. Now, by default, that would be very, very insecure because then you could just iframe any page you want, but the developers have built in some protections and they are only allowing specific paths um, to be placed there in the iframe to be iframed. So, okay, how are we going to get around this? Well, our uh, researcher here has found a very clever way because he can put in a path that is allowed and then use dot dot slash to escape out of that path into a root directory and then point to the malicious file that we have just created. That way we can send a message to somebody, for example the administrator, and then when the administrator looks at that message, they will get the XSS executed uh, without them knowing it. And so this is a really cool way where we went from uh, a quite a bug without a lot of impact and we escalated it to have way more impact and now we're going to see how we can escalate this even further to have the most impact you could imagine. So let's look into that. Where do we want to go from here? Well, we want an RCE, a remote code execution. And in the front end, we're unlikely to find it. However, IP board also has a back end. And in this back end, there is a feature where you can edit templates and through that way you could upload a malicious PHP file that will give you an RCE. However, it is behind authentication. You need to be an administrator on the backend in order to do all of that, in order to get that RCE. But now we know our goal. We want to become that administrator on the backend. And how are we going to do that? Because currently we only have an XSS on the frontend on the administrator. But IP board has this feature called widgets and they can be configured from the front end and um, the cool thing about these is that you can pretty much inject them with malicious malicious code that will execute on any page that you want so what we could do is in our uh, our administrator visits the message that we sent them and XSS will be triggered what it will do is it will create a new widget on the front end that in injects some malicious code on the index page of this website. So anybody visiting this IP board instance on the index page, the main page, will get XSS. That is already very bad. However, I'm about to make it 10 times worse because on the back end, an administrator has a button that says visit the front end. And that's all cool. Obviously, that's very nice for an administrator to immediately be able to visit the front end from the back end. That's very handy. But if you visit the front end from the back end, then there will be a header called the referrer header, which will contain obviously the URL of where it came from, which is the back end. So the administrator visits that and comes on the main page, the index page, which we have poisoned with our access. But not, nothing is wrong with that, right? I mean, okay, we will get the URL. What's wrong with that? Well, the thing that's wrong with that is that the back end you put the session ID in a get parameter. So in the get parameter, there will be a session ID for the administrator. So the administrator then presses that button to go back to the front end, and in the refer header, the get parameters are included. So we, because we poisoned that main page of the front end, we will then be able to see his session ID, his or her session ID, and that way log in as an administrator on the back end and get that RCE Finally, that was it for today's CVE deep dive. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like any more information on anything we talked about today, then please visit the link down below in the description to the advisory of SSD Secure Disclosure.
Now, if you like hunting for these kind of vulnerabilities, then be sure to contact SSD Secure Disclosure when you find one, because they can help you get that vulnerability disclosed as well as getting you rewarded for it. Find more information in the links down below in the description. That was today's video. If you like this video, then subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of these CVE deep dives in the future. Take care, guys.